Hello everybody, uh, welcome to our third lecture of uh, our uh, online training for 5G and uh, today our topic is 5G network architecture and it is one of the very important topics to understand how 5G network is built up and how 5G network is deployed uh, currently and how it is being uh, you can say planned to deploy in the near future and as we go on with major 5G deployments. So what we will begin with is uh, a block diagram of uh, 5G network and uh, right beside it we will show the LTE network and uh, then we will see that uh, what are the differences and what are the new what are the new terminologies being used in 5G network. So as you can see that uh, if we look at this diagram this is your uh, LTE network if you consider this and this is your 5G network. So in LTE, uh, LTE network uh, the uh, core pair network was known as EPC uh, the evolved packet core and the evolved packet core consisted of uh, an SGW the software gateway and then your MME. The MME was basically controlling all the uh, mobility and other functionalities and uh, basically the control plane and the user plane was handled by SGW. So this was LT. So when we move to 5G, uh, in 5G the core part is called next generation core and the next generation core uh, for 5G consists of two logical uh, you can say uh, block uh, entries, one is UPF and whether is AMP. So basically the UPF uh, deals with your user plane functionalities, all the user data and everything else and AMP is a similar node to MME and it deals with your access and mobility uh, functionalities. So all the management for mobility and access will be carried out by your AMP uh, module. When we come to the radio part, you can see that in LTE our node is called E node B. In 5G our node uh, or our BTS uh, in other words in generic terms is called G and B and that is how it is shown. So this is your LTE network and this is your 5G network. So we have our core called next generation core and we have a node B called the G node B. So this is uh, the general description of uh, the network architecture. Uh, and then if you see that if we have a user here, 5G have 5G specifications give you the capability to attach to the LT network and at the same time attach to the 5G network as well. So what we can happen is that the user can be attached to the next generation core and it can also be attached to the LT network as well. And on the vice versa, a user can be attached to EPC. Meanwhile, it can also be attached to the 5G network. So that is called the multi-connectivity uh, that we discussed uh, or we mentioned in our first lecture. So this goes uh, to the architecture. Now we move to how uh, 5G is being deployed right now. And in our 3G specifications, there are different modes that have been uh, basically recommended or described in order to deploy 5G but uh, and in those modes they are generically called your standalone mode uh, SA and your non-standalone mode. Now standalone mode uh, basically describes that in that mode your 5G network operates as standalone. It's not connected or not underlaid overlaid over an LTE network or over any other network. And the non-standalone mode basically describes uh, the deployment of 5G network as an overlay or underlay or umbrella or under umbrella of an LTE cell. And there are different modes, uh, mode 1, mode 2, mode 3, mode 4, mode 5, up till uh, mode 8 and 9. Uh, you can say options 8 and 9 for different kind of deployment for 5G. But the most common deployment which is going on right now uh, in major parts of the world is your NSA mode 3 non-standalone option 3 or mode 3 and in this mode what we can see is that we have as a core part we have our EPC that is your evolved packet core from LTE then this is connected 
to your E node B, that is your LTE node B and the LTE e node B is then connected to your G and B. So, what happens is that your LTE is your primary cell and your 5G is your secondary cell. This is similar to your carrier aggregation part, uh, but what happens here is that all the control plane functionality, for example, mobility, uh, you can say security, access and everything else is carried out by E node B. And you can see that your E node B has a control and user plane functionality with EPC, while your G node B is not connected to your EPC. Your G node B is connected to your E node B via the interface XX. And the XX interface has both user plane and control plane part. So what happens is that your user has a connection to your E node B and the user has a connection to your G node B as well. But it has no control part being connected to your G node B. All the control functionality is handled by E node B. And another thing uh, which basically describes uh, this option is that all the data is collected at E node B and then it is transferred over to EPC. So this is how uh, the option 3 works and there is another option called 3A. And in option 3A basically what the difference is that in this mode the data is being collected at E node B. And in option 3A, the data gets collected at the EPC. So this user data goes to EPC and the data is collected there and it is processed accordingly. So what we have described in this lecture is our basic 5G architecture and the, the most common mode, the most common option for 5G deployment which is being used right now. And I hope uh, at the end of this lecture now, you have a better understanding how 5G network is, uh, uh, is has this architecture and how 5G is deployed with LTE and uh, being a secondary cell to a master LTE cell. So thank you so much for your time today and we will meet you in our next uh, 5G training video and be with us on this uh, online course where you can learn 5G uh, for free and do subscribe and do share and do like our video. Thank you so much.